Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and this time I've got a full preview for you on the brand new Tier 10 Soviet light tank, the T-100LT. This thing is ludicrously fast. It also has pretty darn decent frontal armor, and it will hold the proud title of the most sneaky high-tier tank. When you've got this thing fully equipped, you're packing over 40% camouflage when moving, making this certainly one of the best scout tanks in the game, as well as also being able to pack a punch with a, a kind of a tier 9 100mm main armament, quite similar to what is on the T-54 for example. Firstly, I'm going to run down the full statistics of this vehicle, compare it to a few of the other tier 10 tanks to highlight its key strengths, and then follow it up with some ace tanker gameplay. So let's see how the T100LT stacks up compared to the tier 10 Chinese light tank, the WZ1321, the tier 10 German light tank, the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, the tier 10 American Sheridan, and the AMX13105. No prizes for guessing that is the French tier 10 light tank. So immediately you will notice the T100 actually has the lowest DPM of any of the vehicles that use a single shot gun. And it's it's only just a little bit better than the AMX 13105 which does have a three round autoloader. The penetration of the vehicle is also the lowest and one thing that's bizarre about this tank is that its standard rounds are APCR and its premium rounds are armor piercing and unfortunately these premium rounds have a terrible shell velocity of 790 and they're only 18 millimeters more with regards to their penetration. The standard APCR rounds on this tank have a great shell velocity of 1200 which is in line with all of the other single shot tier 10 light tanks. As with all high tier 100mm Soviet guns, this vehicle has 320 alpha damage, which is a little bit disappointing compared to the 105mm that are used by all of the other vehicles, and usually you would think that the DPM of the lower alpha damage gun would be higher, but that's certainly not the case here. So what about the gun handling of the T100LT? Well, all of these tier 10 light tanks have got excellent aim time, and the T100LT has two seconds, so you're really not going to have to stop for long to be able to engage your opponents effectively. And one thing that's also absolutely incredible about this tank is it seems to be ridiculously effective at firing when moving accurately, with a dispersion value of only 0 0.06, which is a third of the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen and half of the Sheridan and the Chinese WZ1321. And so this means that the T100LT should be a fan favorite for the light tank drivers of you out there who just can't stop moving and you want to keep firing while doing so. But on the other hand, you are certainly not going to be very accurate at 0.44 accuracy. That is kind of the equivalent of a very derpy Soviet tier 8 heavy tank. And it's worse than every single one of the other tier 10 light tanks and so you should definitely try to avoid sniping at long ranges in the T100LT and instead get to short and mid ranges and continuously fire while moving and you're going to do so very accurately thanks to the awesome dispersion values. One thing that's a little disappointing about this vehicle but it kind of makes sense considering it's a Soviet tank is that it gets five degrees of gun depression that's the same as the Chinese vehicle but half of the German and the American tier 10 light tanks. And so if you're looking for a ridgeline sniper the T100LT is certainly not going to be the vehicle for you. Now on to one of the most impressive aspects of this vehicle and that is the mobility. This thing has a 72 km an hour top speed limit, only beaten by the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, and it also goes backwards exceptionally quickly at 25 km an hour. And now on to the best aspect of the tank, and that is the power to weight ratio, which is 48, giving this vehicle one of the best power to weight ratios in the entire game, and certainly the best at tier 10. However, on the other hand, this is kind of balanced out a little bit by the ground resistances of this tank, which are 1 on hard, 1.3 on medium, and 1.9 on on soft and we can see that this is worse than all of the other tier 10 light tanks. And so that means that it's quite likely that the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen is actually going to be faster than the T100LT when it's on medium terrain but it's going to be a close run event on hard and also on soft. Next up the turret traverse. It's an incredible 53 degrees a second and this thing has awesome tank traverse as well at 56 degrees a second making it very effective on hard, less so on medium but an absolute performer on soft. So now onto the armor of the T100LT and that's something that not a lot of light tanks can boast having, right? But the T100LT certainly can, with 100 millimeters on the front of the hull, 180 on the turret, and 40 at the sides of the rear of both the hull and the turret. And so this means that this vehicle can actually ricochet quite well indeed. Just take a look at the front of this vehicle, it has so many auto ricochets, and when angled pretty much at 30 degrees like this, the whole of the side of the tank will still be a ricochet, and the upper plate is about 230 up to 245 millimeters thick. Now the vehicle does have a cupola, and also the roof of the tank is 26 millimeters thick which means this is going to get over
overmatched by 80 millimeter caliber guns. And so just don't expect to be able to sit hull down against most vehicles, but you know what, your turret might pull off a ricochet, which is at least something. But the hull armor is darn effective, and especially at the size, this 40 millimeters is very welcome, and that means that all 120 millimeter caliber guns are not going to be able to simply fire a shot at you and overmatch this tank. Next up, check out the hit points of this vehicle, 1,500, which kind of gives this tank the hit points of a, of a tier 8 medium, possibly even some tier 9 mediums, which will hopefully give you the durability that you need to finish off that tank that's coming after you, or survive for long enough to spot and win the game. And finally, while this tank has a very nice 410 meters view range, that pales in comparison to all of the other tier 10 light tanks, so that's certainly something to take into account. But there's one aspect of this vehicle that's utterly incredible, and that is its low profile, which of course gives it an awesome camera rating of 42% when you have this tank fully tricked out. That's using a premium consumable, ventilation, giving your tank a fancy paint job, having camouflage in all of your crews, and also skills like Brothers in Arms to further boost it. And having 42% camo rating when you're moving should allow you to create this, this zone between about 445 to about 260 meters, where a tank with 450 meters view range is just not going to be able to spot you but it's very likely that you're going to be able to spot him. And if we take a look at the camera ratings of all of the other tier 10 light tanks, the Reimertal Panzerwagen has under 34%, the Sheridan is at 31.5%, the AMX are a better 38.74%, and the WZ1321 is at less than 34 and a half. And so you can clearly see where the low profile nature of the T100 LT, apart from making it look a little bit bizarre, gives it a key advantage on the battlefield. But you know what, I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's see how this absolute little terror performs on the battlefield. And so here we go, Wargaming's new matchmaking system has put us into what they're calling a one level battle, i.e. every tank on the enemy team and also on my team a tier 10. So this feels like it's going to be a bit of a clan wars game, right? Hopefully we'll be able to see how the T100 LT is going to be able to perform against tier 10 tanks in a game like this. Now check out the ludicrous speed of this tank. 72 kilometers an hour top speed limit. When we're going down slope, we're up to about 75 there. And this thing, just check out how fast it's able to go up slope as well. Just look how low profile this tank is. Looks like an absolute pancake. <laughs> Look, we're accelerating up the slope, 70 up the slope. This is what a 48 power to weight ratio, down to 60, 65 still going up the slope. We spot the Bat Chatillon, and remember this is the kind of range that you want to get into. You want to be from the, this circle here, which is 445 meters, probably all the way up to about here. And your enemies just aren't going to spot you, unless of course you fire. If, you're fi if you fire, you're going to reduce your camera rating significantly, but at least if you want to play the, the spotting role for your team and start to whittle down your opponents, then you've got this whole area to work with, with the T100 LT. And I think this is probably going to be one of, if not the best, pure scout tanks in the game. So I push forwards, bounce a shell off the upper plate of the Bat Chantillon, he puts one into me, he's firing heat, probably not going to be able to ricochet that at all even with the enhanced armour of, well, capabilities of this tank compared to other lights. But I'm just going to pull back, put one into him, and then if he'd come round the corner I probably would have been able to finish him off. Sure the DPM isn't fantastic on this tank, but it's still pretty darn decent. And having 320 alpha damage, that's better than what all of the tier 8 light tanks in the game have at the moment. I think the highest alpha damage is probably going to be 250 on the T-54 lightweight or on the WZ-132, right? And now this is where you can start to, to open up in this tank. The it looks like the Gorilla spots me, unfortunately, so I have to play a little bit careful, carefully here. But when I've got turret armor and my tank is so low profile, if I can work with the 5 degrees of gun depression this tank has, then it really is exceptional. Now just take a look at the bloom of the uh, of the gun, even when I'm fully aimed it's still rather large because remember this tank is not very accurate at 0.44, didn't really stop us from putting in three rounds there, one into the gorilla, actually we put in four rounds, two into the 50B and one into the leopard, but look how high and right that shell goes, missing the leopard one, will we be able to put in the next one, no doesn't look quite look like it, the 0.44 accuracy showing its ugly head. And yeah, not the best rate of fire. I mean, if I was playing in a in a Soviet medium tier 10 medium tank right now, I'd be packing nine rounds a minute up to like 9.4, I believe, on the 430. Whereas this thing's rate of fire, 
it's down to, what is it exactly, 7.14 rounds a minute. So that's just under what a tier 9 Soviet medium tank would be capable of. Now we're loading high explosive round for the first one to lower the T-92's hit points enough to be able to finish him off with a, an armor piercing round or a high explosive round there. Then we've got a Bat Chatty on 155.58 who's running away. What? Does he have three marks of excellence on his tier 10? He does! Three marks of excellence on a tier 10 artillery. Put it down, put it down quickly. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people quite angry I said that. But rah, rah, rah. Okay, let's ignore it. Let's focus on killing this AFK Bat Chantillon 15555 in front of us. One thing I'd like to highlight. Oh, there's a Pascucci's medal. Or is it still called a Pascucci's medal? I think it might be. We'll have to see in the post-game stats. But do you see how much damage and how much spotting we've been able to pick up so quickly? And you just have the confidence in this tank. You're a tier 10 vehicle. I would have probably played just how I, I have now uh, in the previous version of the game if I was in a, a tier 8 Soviet light tank, like the T-54 lightweight, or if I was in the WZ-132. But now I just have so much confidence. I've got that, that better DPM. I've got that better armor. I've got more hit points. I'm faster. Everything about these tanks is better. Now, of course, you're going to have to deal with higher tiered opponents on average. You're no longer going to be able to meet tier 7 tanks, but I think... It more or less makes up for it. Look what we were able to achieve. Four minutes, 4,000 damage, and over 4,000 spotting. What a result for the T100 LT in an absolute storm of a game. So this was an ace tanker for the T100 LT, and we also get a, a Dumitru's medal, which previously, up until patch 918, which this is the test server, of course, was rewarded, I guess, for killing four enemy self-propelled guns. Now it looks like it's rewarded for killing three equal-tiered self-propelled guns, I guess. And remember, that's because in patch 918, you're never going to be able to see more than three self-propelled guns in a game of World of Tanks. In addition to that, we get a Confederate medal. We truly were the supporting role for our team here. We finished top on experience, 1,146. And as I mentioned, 4,088 damage dealt and 4,179 spotting. These tier 10 light tanks truly are really fun to play when you're in a dominant game like this. You can just keep ahead of the mediums. And you've got 80-90% of the capabilities of the medium tank. And unless you need higher penetration, which we certainly didn't need here because we were either shooting the heavier armored targets in the back or engaging soft and mid-armored vehicles in the, in the front or the side, then these tier 10 light tanks go on an absolute riot. And games like this, when I was playing on the test server, it didn't really feel like it was just a one-off. I played nine games, lost one, won eight, 89% win ratio, 1,229 average experience, 2,500 damage dealt. That's a lot lower than what you would get on a tier 10 medium tank. But look at the assistance, 1,841 assistance average per game, as well as spotting over a quarter of the enemy team on average each game and still picking up a few kills along the way. These tier 10 light tanks truly feel awesome and I can't wait to get my hands on them. But just very quickly before a lot of people are going to start claiming that these tanks are ridiculously overpowered and surely there's no point in playing medium tanks anymore, let's just have a quick look at the T100 LT compared to the T62A. So the T62A has 27% higher DPM than the T100 LT. It also has 34 millimeters of penetration extra. And let's not forget that the T62A can get heat rounds with 330 millimeters of penetration that will allow you to contest the thickest armor in the game, whereas the tier 10 Soviet light tank can only go up to 248 millimeters of penetration, which really isn't going to contest the frontal armor of some of the most mid to heavily armored targets. Furthermore, the T-62A has way better shell velocity, more ammunition, the same aim time, 0.1 better accuracy, although slightly worse dispersion values, which kind of changes out the aim time a little bit. Sure, it's going to be a lot slower, but its armor is so much better. With a T-62A, you just can't penetrate this thing reliably in the turret at all. Sure, if you shoot the cheeks here to the left and here to the right and have a very high penetration gun or you fire premium rounds, you stand a fairly good chance of going in. But the difference in the armor capabilities is, is just gigantic. As well as the T-62A pretty much having 33% extra hit points. Although its camo is going to be worse and it's got 10 meters less view range. And I personally think that Wargaming have done a great job with balancing the tier 10 light tanks. They're certainly not going to replace tier 10 mediums with regards to their combat capacity and their, their definitely not going to have the penetration to be able to contest 
decent armor. And if you try to snipe at mid to long ranges, unless you're shooting at large, softly armored targets, you're going to be pretty hopeless. But on the other hand, if you want to have a hell of a lot of speed, a hell of a lot of camo, and the view range to go along with it, as well as enough armor to be able to take a hit, then there's certainly going to be a new force on the battlefield to be reckoned with. And so hopefully you enjoyed this preview, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please give the video a like. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments what you think about the T100 LT. Do you think it looks absolutely awesome? Do you think that medium tanks are now going to be redundant? Or do you think, God forbid, that Wargaming have done an excellent job with introducing new balanced tier 10 tanks into the game? And also, if you're one of those kind of guys who believes in a meta of World of Tanks, what kind of an impact do you think that the tier 10 light tanks are going to have? Do you think they're going to punish tank destroyers? Or do you think they're going to provide extra view range for tank destroyers? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.